And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday night wine stream and another exciting edition of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and tonight we are going to be opening up a bottle of Southern Bell red wine. This is, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that this is, um, I have a little, I had a few reservations about the, uh, a wine like, another wine like this, because last week I opened up, uh, if you watched the wine stream last week, it was a Cooper and Thief uh, red wine, and it was uh, a barrel, uh, barrel aged, uh, it's a kind of a, a, where is that thing? It's right back here. It's a, it was a red blend, and it was supposed to be a whiskey or a bourbon barrel uh, aged. And this is sort of the same uh, type of thing, except this is a Spanish wine, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna give this a try. I'll tell you what happened with the Cooper and Thief uh, thing in a little bit, but this is what we're gonna try tonight. And uh, we're also I also have a really really nice meal that I'm gonna show you uh, as well. We're gonna see if it pairs with it uh, at all, a little bit. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm really excited about this, and this is going to be a special edition of the Wine Stream. Of course, this is Labor Day weekend, and I'm looking forward to Labor Day. And we've got a lot of, I have a lot of birthdays and anniversaries to celebrate and to drink to. Uh, I'm not going to do National Days this this time because I, I think with all the birthdays and the anniversaries, I just may not have time to get to those. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to pull them up uh, for the uh, <laughs> for the evening, but. Uh, that's okay, but we're going to try this, and I'm hoping that this will be a good wine to toast with, because if not, it's it's going to be a uh, it's it's going to I'm, I'm going to be drinking it anyway, I guess. Let's see what we have in the chat first of all. Penny's in the chat with us. Penny, it's great to see you. It's been a while since I've seen you uh, joining us in the stream. I hope. Uh, I hope you can stick around tonight because this is going to be great. This is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be doing some things. Uh, I'm going to be talking about some stuff. We're going to be drinking some wine, of course. We're going to try it out. And I'm going to be pairing it up with a really, really special dinner that I have tonight. So we're going to see how it, it all uh, pairs up, if it does. We'll see. And uh, let me see just a moment if we have anyone in the... YouTube chat. I don't usually get too many people in the YouTube chat. We have people watching, uh, just n nobody really, really uh, active in the chat. That's not surprising. I, I get that a lot in, in YouTube, and I think that's kind of a common thing there, but that's okay. But hey, if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, join me. I will be checking the chat. I'm up on Twitter as well, so we can check the chat there. If anyone wants to comment there in the chat, I'll be checking that. Also, for the first time, we're on Twitch. Now, Twitch is really more for the gamers. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to draw a lot of, of the, uh, uh, the, the older crowd uh, you know, for, for wine, but they do have a uh, podcast uh, segment there on YouTube and some uh, live streamers. So we'll, we'll see how that, that works out. And, and if you're on Twitch, thanks for joining me. I do have a chat up for that. I've got to get back to it. I think it's, uh, it's somewhere here. Um, I don't know where it is at the moment. I'm off to find it, but we're gonna. I'm, I'm gonna try and get into the chat with you guys. Uh, and uh, Matt's joined us. Matt, it's great to see you. Matt, thanks a lot uh, for joining us tonight. I hope you'll stick around as well. And we're gonna open up a bottle of this uh, this wine. That, by the way, I purchased at Wine Store Online. Um, wine Store uh, Dash Online dot com is the site. So uh, Matt. Um, we're going to try this out and see what happens. This this was recommended to me. Uh, I think it was by Molly there, and um, I think that uh, we're going to, we're going to give this a try. We're going to give this a try. Anyway, before I get too far into it, of course you can join me uh, on YouTube at Drink with Rick, the Drink with Rick channel on YouTube. You can join me. Uh, you can tweet me at Twitter, uh, Twitch. Of course, we're on for the first time. And uh, also at drinkwithrick.com. Now, I don't have a chat up there right now at drinkwithrick.com, but you can still watch me. Uh, you can go to drinkwithrick.com, check out the wine stream there, and watch it live. That's, that's, uh, uh, that's fine. Let's see what else. Uh, and Matt says, enjoy the Southern Bell. I certainly hope so, Matt. There's a little backstory to some of this. I, I hope you'll stick around because I, I, I really wanted to talk about that a little bit. 
Uh, and by the way, um, Matt is um, uh, Matt is from the wine store. Dot com uh, for full for full disclosure and, and no I'm not I'm not a paid chill for wine store okay I'm just do this because I like I love the people at wine store Matt and the ladies there the whole staff they're really really good to me every time I go in they uh, they give me some great recommendations on wine uh, I'll be honest I, we've had a couple of hits and misses with wines as you can see it all back here and we've we've talked about that on wine Street in the past but never never any of the wines from the wine store. Uh, the, the, the misses that I've had were from other places, and that's one reason I keep going back to Wine Store, because when they recommend a, a good wine, <clears throat> it usually turns out to be a pretty good wine. So they know there's stuff there. Uh, so Matt, I want to thank you, and I uh, thank the, uh, the ladies and, and, and your staff at, at Wine Store uh, for helping to steer me in the right directions. And it's given me the opportunity to try some really wonderful wines. Let's see what else we have going on here. Oh, yeah, you know, you can also email me at uh, rick at savoymedia.com if you want to comment on the show or on the stream. So let's, uh, I think we're just going to go ahead and open this for starters because I want to get into uh, pairing and, and socializing and toasting people and things like that. And there, we have a lot of birthdays to toast this Last week, I really didn't have too many to toast. It was a good thing because um, the, 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 uh, the wine I opened last week was, was not exactly my favorite. And I'm hoping this will redeem it. And we'll, we'll see. Anyway, um, before we actually open the wine, I'm going to do a little uh, checking here. Uh, Price-wise, I'll tell you what I paid for it in a minute. And I'll, I'll tell you what this wine is all about. In fact, let me go ahead and pull up. I have some images of the wine. This is what the front of the, the bottle looks like. And uh, I usually take a shot of this because you can usually see it a little bit better in high res there than you can. I, I have an HD camera here, but it's, if I just hold it up to the camera, it's, it's really not the same thing. But this is, I'm going to read the front of the label. There's not really a whole lot of information on the front of the label of this wine. Uh, it says Southern Bell Red Wine uh, Jumila. And, I'm, and it's, in Span it's in Spanish. I'm not going to uh, read all that. And I'm going to turn off my phone here for just a moment. There we go. <laughs> so no I forgot to do that before the show. Uh, imported by Grateful Palate in Napa, California. This is a, it has, its alcohol is 15.5% by volume, 750 milliliter bottle. This is a product of Spain. Now, the, the thing about this is there's not a whole lot uh, of information on the wine and, and what the blend is. It is a red blend, but there's not really a whole lot on it. And if you look on the back, and I'm, uh, let me pull up a shot of the back of this. Um, here we go. Nope, that's the front. Um, hmm. There we go. This is the back of the bottle. <laughs> And it's really nothing. I guess this is the back of the bottle. I assume it is because the, the back of the bottle has uh, an image, a drawing of a lady. And it looks like she's, oh, uh, well, I guess she is facing the back. So I, I suppose it's the back of the bottle. I don't know. There's not a whole lot on here. There's no information on the back. So uh, we're just going to go right back to the front for a minute. And then let me tell you about about this wine that I looked up. I had to look it up online. Uh, the ladies at wine store recommended that I do that so uh, so I could find some information on it because it, it's just kind of uh, uh, not really a whole lot on the bottle itself. This I, I looked it up on Vivino and it goes for about $20 a bottle, $19.99 a bottle. Uh, it's 4.1 stars there on Vivino. And uh, people seem to, a lot of people seem to like this wine. Now, you know, one of the interesting things is that a bourbon barrel um, uh, wines here have become rather popular over the last few years. A lot of people like that. My first foray, foray excuse me, into that uh, wasn't a great experience, but um, uh, maybe this one will be. I'm not really sure what the 
uh, what the attraction is there, but we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna find out. Uh, I'm looking around winesearcher.com. They average around $17 to $22 a bottle, and, and uh, I think Lowe's has it for Lowe's Foods has it for $22.99. They're a little bit pricier anyway. Uh, I don't think there's a Lowe's around us any a Lowe's Foods around us anymore. It used to be. Uh, let's see. Total Wine has it for $18.99 a bottle. And uh, that's pretty much the average. Now, I picked it up from Wine Store. I'll tell you that in just a minute. But I picked it up at Wine Store. Let's get back to the camera here. I have the receipt here. I picked it up for $17.99. And with, so that seems to be the, the going, about, about the average price for it, the going price. It looks like a decent price. I did see it one place for, it was something like about $35. Forty dollars a bottle. I, I couldn't really trust the source, and I and they didn't have any of it. They just and I'm not really sure it was the same vintage. This is a 2017. I don't know if it was the same vintage that they had up for sale. I just saw the price, and then I uh, I just navigated away from the site because I thought, well, that's that's a little bit high um, for what everyone else is selling it for. But let me tell you a little bit more about this wine, and, and I'm actually going to the grateful. I'm going to read this from the gratefulpalate.com. This is uh, who imports the wine. They, it says here, medium deep opaque purple color with dark red rim. Initial aromas uh, redolent of blackberry and blueberry with underlying hits of red fruits give way to pleasing compens complex elements of vanilla and toffee. Sorry, folks, my screen is a little... Uh, squatty here. I've, I've got to get a better screen. Soft yet, soft, big yet elegant mouthfeel, rich full body density, superb balance and grip lead to long, long finish, carrying intense ripe fruit and complex flavors. Now this is the, the wine, uh, the, this is the importer writing all this. So um, I, I guess, and now the vintage they have here that I'm reading this from, this is a 2016 vintage. So I don't know if this is going to be the same thing as the 2016 vintage. Uh, I couldn't find one on the 2017 vintage. But this is a Syrah and a Morvedra blend, apparently, is what this is. And that's what I could find out. It's uh, from Jamila, Spain. And this does uh, sound like it's going to be a little bit better than the last one because the last blend that I, I tried was about four different wines. It was a little too sweet for my taste. With the Morvedra in it, it might might uh, balance that out a little bit. So we'll, 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 with the Syrah, so I, we're, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. So anyway, without any further ado, let's go ahead and open the bottle. And of course, now this one, normally I, I like to use my my wine uh, corker, my uncorker here, but we won't need that tonight because tonight this one is uh, twist cap. And, you know, I didn't used to be a big fan of twist caps, but as I get older, it just seems to be so handy, right? And they seem to work, and people seem to like them. Uh, in fact, I think they've done various studies and polls, and and there doesn't seem to be really a... Um, I think when they first came on the scene like that, a lot of people thought it was, yeah, I prefer a... a, a regular corked wine, oh, not corked wine, but a wine with a cork in it. Uh, but uh, over the years, I think people just really accepted the the twist caps, and and uh, and you know I think that's and I have too. So uh, Penny says, "Love to know if it's mellow or spicy." Well, we're going to find out uh, with a Morvedra in it and a Syrah blend. It should be interesting. And of course, I'm pouring it in my Cooper's Hawk Genuine Crystal. Uh, glass from the Cooper's Hawk uh, Winery and Restaurant in Orlando, Florida. And we're going to open it. Oh, wait a minute. What am I doing? I almost forgot something. Let's aerate this wine. To aerate the wine, it really sounds like I'm selling stuff tonight, isn't it? <laughs> I'm using uh, my Veneto wine pour from the Veneto Wine Lover Set, which, by the way, you can actually uh, pick it up uh, from Amazon. I've got a link there on my website, Amazon.com. I'll make a few cents if you, if, if you can... It really, if you really want to purchase this, um, you know, go to my website at drinkwithrick.com, click on it, and uh, uh, maybe I'll make a few pennies on, on that to help support my wine stream habit, but you don't have to do that. There's no obligation for that, okay? 
just want you to, if you like it, uh, go go get it. If not, it's okay. And if you want to strip the, if you don't like uh, affiliate links, just strip the affiliate part out there. It's okay. See, I'm really terrible at selling. I'm not a very good salesperson because I'll just sit there and say, yeah, here, go buy it over there. Uh, now you're still with me. You're probably <laughs> laughing because that's just not the way way you do things in sales. Um, so we're going to give it a good swirl. It looks dark and healthy. It's it, it does have a rather dark complexion. Oh, by the way, Mark's joined us in the chat. Mark, it's great to see you. Uh, stick around. Tell me what you're drinking. Tell me what you're not drinking. Tell me what you'd like to be drinking. Uh, and chat it up. Tell me what's what's going on. Don't be a stranger. Well, you're not a stranger. Mark and I go way back. Way, 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 way back. Uh, so let's go ahead and try this. Mm -hmm. It smells, um, let me go back to the, this just a minute and oh, let me check my other chats here, see if there's anything going on. It uh, doesn't look, oh wait a minute, let me see. Um, we have uh, M. Campbell, he says, uh, hi Rick. Oh, I'm Molly from the wine store. Oh, it's Molly. Oh, hi Molly, how you doing? It's great to see you. Uh, thanks for joining us. It's Molly from the wine store. Don't censor yourself, you won't hurt my feelings. I'm not the winemaker. <laughs> I appreciate that, Molly. But Molly is um, Molly's actually the one the, uh, who actually recommended this to me. So we're going we're gonna to find out here in, in just a few moments. Uh, just just what what's uh... now? I can I can uh... now. I have never tried this one, by the way. I've been to the wine store uh, this past Thursday, and I tried some uh, some wines they had for for tastings. And um, I have not tried this one. This was not one of the tastings, so we'll find out. And I can smell. It does have some nice hues to it. I can smell the fruit. Interesting. Hint of nut in there. I don't. Know. I can't pick them out. But um, it's it's. Uh, Okay, I have to have another, another swig of this. Mm. Kind of fruity. Um, there is a slight hint of bourbon to it. There is a slight hint of bourbon, like the other one was, but it is. Um, some tannins, but it's a lot drier. It's a lot drier than, than and I'm going to mention the other one. <laughs> I want to concentrate on this right now. This is actually, I, I like this so far. A little spicy. I get some um, few floral notes. A little bit, um, yeah, I can pick out uh, some of the fruits. You know, I'm really enjoying this. Wait a minute. I, I've got to have a little bit more of this because I'm surprised. I'm really, I'm really surprised. I wasn't, I'll be honest, I was expecting something a little bit on the sweet side. And it really doesn't taste, I don't really want to say it's a semi-sweet because it really uh, tastes more dry. And I kind of sort of expected that with the, with the Syrah Morvedra uh, mix, but it, it's uh, drier than I thought it was going to be. And at pleasantly so. I'll have to say pleasantly so. I like this a lot because uh, it's a complete 180 from the wine I tried last week. Now I'm going to tell you what I tried last week. If if you didn't, if you missed the stream, mm. I like this. It has a little bit of bourbon. It's not smoky or anything like that, but it's it's. Um, it has a really nice finish to it. It's very, it's kind of silky. I, I like it. It's it's a little bit, a little bit on the silky side. But it smells nice, and it has a nice little. It's just a slight little, a little. 
little bite to it, but it, I, I really enjoy this. I'm gonna have some more. Okay, Matt, I think you've got a winner here, and I, I, I'll have to say you should give Molly a raise because uh, I think Molly, I, th I think I like this right off the bat. Now, of course, as I've said before, you can't really tell a, a wine how good a wine is until you get really down into the bottle. Little tastings don't don't do enough. You really have to get down into the bottle. But I'll tell you what. You know what? I think I'm going to taste. I'm going to. I'm going to uh, toast all these birthdays and anniversaries with gusto because this is a wine worth worth tasting, uh, trying out. Uh, let me see what we've got. It's, I, I went away from the chat for a minute, but um, let me get back to here. Uh, Penny says sold. Oh, she says dry and spicy. A little bit, yes. It, it is It is a little, just not too spicy. It's, it's not like, it, it's not overly spicy, but it's, it's 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 a, a really really nice balance. I can't really I can't really explain it too much because it's just um, because I'm a little overwhelmed at the moment because I was my expectations were not, I'll be honest my expectations were not high because I saw that it was um, uh, it, it was something that was sold to me as as a little bit on par with this but better. And I'll have to say, Molly, uh, you you have a winner here because that that was that was a, an excellent choice. All right, let me tell you what what I tried last week. If you missed the wine stream last week, uh, and oh, and Penny says, what about that dinner? What you pairing it with? I'll show you that in just a minute. I'm really excited about that. What I did last week was I opened up a Cooper and Thief red blend, and. Uh, I have an I have a picture of this right here. I'm going to show I'm going to show this. This is uh, if you've never seen Cooper and Thief, it is a. Um, let me find it here. Where to go with it? Uh, there we go. This I, if you go to Sam's Club, I'm sure you've seen them in the Sam's Club, um, and and they're sold in a lot of different supermarkets. I, I, a lot of supermarkets have these things. And this, this is supposed to go over really big. It's supposed to be a real big wine that uh, everybody loves. And it's, it's a uh, burble. Oh, blah, burble. It's a, let me, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab this bottle for a second. Because this bottle is now empty. And I'll tell you why in a moment. This has, um, It's dark and jammy, <laughs> and it definitely is, but it has a, a lot of different, I think it has three or four different uh, blends of wine in it, and get off there, there we go, but this was sold to me, this was recommended to me by uh, a, a nice, really nice, uh, sweet lady uh, at one of our uh, house concerts last uh, last month. And um, we have a, some neighbors who do the house concerts uh, once or twice a month. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, uh, she was there and she heard about the wine stream and she says, Oh, you've got to try this. You've got to try the Cooper and Thief red wine blend. So I said, Okay. And it was a while before I could get around to doing it, but I finally got around to purchasing this because I'd seen them all the time in the stores and I just kind of passed it up. I, so I tried it, and I opened it up on the wine stream last uh, last week, and um, I should have played a video clip here, but I didn't prepare one. But my reaction to it was a little bit, <laughs> because I was not expecting it to be as sweet as it was. It just kind of threw me, and I'm not a big fan of sweet wines. I, I prefer dry reds, but it, it just, it really overwhelmed me. I, I wasn't really expecting it to be that sweet of a wine and it was very smoky it was it was okay it's just it was just too sweet and as i got down in the bottle as we finished the wine stream by the time we were finished i i, I was thinking you know this is just uh, it's just uh, kind of icky sweet for me i guess um i don't know if that's a fair, really a fair thing to say about it. it's not an icky wine it's just just not my preference i'm sure a lot of a lot of people love this wine it seems to be very popular it's just not my preference for a wine well what happened was i got um i put it in the fridge 
I, I only drank uh, drank a little less than half the bottle during the stream. I put it in down the fridge, and then it just sat there for a couple of days because I didn't want to to uh, and really there wasn't anything that I was eating that I really really was compelled to drink it with. So after a couple of days, I opened it up and I was looking for a wine to drink and. I, I opened the bottle up and it was just it's sweet and just overly to me it was a little too jammy and it uh i just decided you know at that point i decided i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna bail on this and i uh <laughs> i dumped the rest of the bottle out in the sink <laughs> yes i did and i have i've said i've done that before well this is this is another time where i've done a bottle of wine down the sink um now <laughs> Now, kind of upset Chi because I went upstairs and told her, you know, she was, uh, I said, you know, I just dumped that, that bottle of wine down the sink and she, she got a little upset with me. She says, what? I was going to use it for cooking because she does. She uses, she, now she doesn't drink a whole lot of wine herself, but she does use it for cooking. And um, that's one of her kind of secret ingredients for some of her dishes. And she, she does some marvelous dishes. Uh, she's, she's an excellent cook. But she does use wine a lot in her in her recipes, and she says I could have used that wine, you know, for cooking. And I thought, well, I guess <laughs> my bad. And, and then it wouldn't have gone to waste because I think it probably would have been okay for cooking with. I, I, in fact, it, it probably would have been great for cooking with, uh, but it, it just was not, in my opinion, a wine to drink. So. Penny says, uh, what about that dinner? Oh, yeah, what you pairing it with? I will show you. Let's get back to this because I really like this wine. And once again, Molly, I really, really appreciate the recommendation. This is what happened. I, I went to the wine store Thursday to, uh, to look for something else for, for this weekend. And I told her about the Cooper and Thief. And she says, you know what? I may have just a thing for, for you. She says, this wine here, the Southern Bell wine, it uh, has a lot of the qualities of of this Cooper and Thief, but it's not as sweet. And she she said that uh, she said I, I think you know knowing my uh, palate for wine, she she said I think you'll really like this better. And I you know I'd already been button once on this thing, but I I was I trust them. <laughs> That's how much I trust uh, Matt and, 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 and uh, Molly and Trish over there and their recommendations. So I said, you know what, I'll try it. I'll give it a, I'll give it a shot. So uh, you know what, I am not at all disappointed. Thank you, Molly. And look, this is for Molly. This is to you. I wanna, you're going to be the first person I toast on this wine stream tonight because I really, I really like this wine. In fact, I think I'm going to go pick up another bottle of it um, this coming week. Maybe maybe two. I'll say. If you've, you've got any more in the back, just hold one for me. I'm I'm, I'm gonna. I might pick it up. So I, I really do like this. But once again, thank you, Molly. And Matt, I'm gonna toast you too, for uh, for hiring Molly. <laughs> and uh, and Trish too. I want to toast all of you. And it really, it does have some nice aromas to it. I can I can smell the aromas. A little. A little flowery, but it's just it's it's a nice blend. It really is, and uh, I, I'm impressed with this one. I like this one. So uh, good call, good uh, good good call, uh, Matt and Molly and Trish in Wine Store. Excellent. Um, and uh, this this is why I shop there a lot for my wines. Uh, by the way, Wine Store is located in, they're, they're local in, in Charlotte. They have several locations in Charlotte. And uh, the one that I usually frequent is um, the one in, um, in Blakeney, in the Blakeney area. And it's across from the, from the uh, uh, Blakeney Shopping Center there in, um, next to the uh, Best Buy and all that. And uh, it's a little, little tucked away there. But uh, it's it's a really nice spot, and it's, it's perfect for me because Tommy works at the Target over there across the street. So I'll go by and see him and, and, uh, and go <clears throat> shop at the wine store, and uh, it's all good. So, so oh, I'm sorry, Penny. What, what was I pairing it with? Oh, Matt says, uh, cheers to you, Rick Savoya. I, I appreciate that, Matt. Cheers to you, too. One more time. Here you go. And... Um, <laughs> 
Chris, that's the, the bomb. Yeah, it's the bomb. Yeah, it really is. I, I, um, it really is. It really is, Trish. And by the way, Trish just just popped in there. Thanks for joining us tonight. Here's you, Trish. So tonight, I was going to mention. I know Penny's been waiting for this for a while, right? Um, tonight, I have this. Now, what this is? Let me get a close up of this. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Oops, that's wrong. Here we go. I've um, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Now, uh, Matt and the ladies there, uh, if you if you like to eat out a lot in the in the general area, Charlotte area, you might recognize what this is. Um, for the, for everyone else, um, this is a humongous smoked beef rib, and uh, I love these things. Tommy and I uh, get these, and we get them from we we have the. Uh, just lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, we have a smokehouse over here that we get these from, and uh, they do it on Friday, Saturday, uh, Sunday nights when they're available. It's the Midwood. It's the Midwood Smokehouse. You know what? This wine, I think it's starting to kick in. I'm going to have some more. But <laughs> as if I need more, right? Uh, yeah, you never know. I might finish the whole bottle of this tonight. <laughs> Uh, where was it? Oh, yes. Midwood. We have uh, several um, of the Midwood Smokehouse uh, barbecue uh, grills around the Charlotte area. And we have one up the road from us in uh, off of Johnston in Torrington. And they do this on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights while they're available. They only make so many. They smoke so many of these, but they do a beef rib. And this thing is to die for. It really is. I mean, you talk about a, a fall off the bone tender. That's what this is. It's just literally falling off the bone tender. Now, the reason this one's still on the bone uh, is because uh, this has been in the fridge for a little while because um, I couldn't let it sit out for four or five hours uh, before the stream because we had this earlier uh, this evening. I'm going to try a little bit of this to see how it pairs. It is a little bit. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to cut it very well because it is, it is, um, it, it is not falling off the bone now because it's not hot. It's cold. They're now cold cuts. But uh, I'm going to try a little bit of this. But I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I want to get one of these big fruit. Now, they're a little pricey. They're like 30 bucks for this rib. And this is actually half the rib. Believe it or not, this is, this is half the rib. The, the, they have the, the the rib bone is usually about a foot long. Uh, they cut this one in two pieces for for uh, for us tonight, but it's a um, foot long bone, and there's so much meat. It's for two people. Usually Tommy and I will get this. We go out to eat. Tommy and I will will have this, and Chi and Tia will have something else. Uh, I think Chi, uh, uh, Tia prefers her chicken wings or her or her chicken tenders, but. Uh, Tommy and I will order one of these, and we'll just barely finish the, the two of us. And we both are fairly big eater, eaters here. But uh, I'm doing a, too much talking, not enough eating, right? Let's see. Hmm. You know what? And actually... Um, does pretty well with this. I didn't really expect it to. I, I know this is supposed to pair okay with beef, but didn't really. When we're talking about smoked beef, I mean, there's beef and there's smoked beef, and uh, smoked beef is is a little bit. I've had wines before that would pair fine with beef dishes, or say like a grilled, uh, you know, a steak or a burger or something like that. When we start smoking stuff. Sometimes some of those wines don't pair as well with those. This one seems to do all right with it. I mean, I can think of wines that would probably pair better with really smoked meats, but this is um, this is actually not bad. This is pretty decent. Also, I have on here. I have their. Um, this is all for you. It's 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 just not healthy. But um, chicken. I, I love chicken. But that sort of narrowed down my my uh, uh, options when I'd go 
eating barbecue in Florida, and, and basically all I could eat would be the chicken. Well, uh, there was one barbecue place that did offer some brisket, I think, later on. They didn't do it in the very beginning. I think they um, offered it later on. And I think it was Bubba Lou's. I think Bubba Lou's Bodacious Barbecue down there uh, used to do that. And there used to be one down the street from my computer store. When I had my computer store in Altamont Springs, Florida. And uh, Tommy, when Tommy was, was really little, and I used to have to, to kind of take him with me at, to the store, sometimes we'd just walk down a couple of blocks uh, from the store for lunch and just lock up the store during the lunch hour, and, and we'd just go have uh, some bubble loose. And it was great barbecue. I love good barbecue, by the way. Well, over the years, and, and, and maybe that's been the case all the, all the time in North Carolina. I don't know. When we moved to North Carolina, all of a sudden I started discovering barbecue places that were serving beef. Now, some of these really weren't, they just have some brisket. That's usually what they offered was just brisket. And some of them had pretty good brisket. Some of them didn't. But um, when, uh, in fact, the, the, the previous uh, barbecue place uh, that used to uh, be there where, where uh, Midwood is now, uh, they had brisket and that was it, but their brisket was okay. It was, it was decent. It wasn't, it wasn't great, but it was, it was pretty good. Um, but Midwood, Midwood, their brisket is just amazing. I really love their brisket. I really do. Their beef brisket is so good. And they have a couple of different varieties. They have, you know, lean and they have kind of middle of the road and they have the really fatty ones. So, and, and then they have a, like a mix where you can get a little mix of the lean and the fatty. And because some people love the, you know, because that's where a lot of the flavor is, is in the fat, right? It's not good for us, but that's where the flavor is. Especially when you, when you smoke meat and you, you know, get barbecue. See who else is in the chat here. Jonathan, Jonathan's in the chat with us. Great to see you, Jonathan. And uh, he says, uh, smoke them if you got them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he also said, uh, uh, Midwoods, yep. Yeah. How is the Southern Bell? Yes, it is. You know, it is really, really good. I'm really enjoying this. This is a really good one. I, I recommend, I do recommend this wine. I, I definitely do recommend it. Uh, and, and once again, when I'm putting this together with the one I tried last week, the Cooper and Thief, I could say, uh, mind of that one. <laughs> you know, let me get another bottle of this. I, I really enjoy it. So uh, where, where was I here? Oh, uh, yeah, we're talking about barbecue. So when they came out with this beef rib, that just floored me. I had to try it. Uh, before them, they just had the, the brisket. And they're just offering the rib like on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. But they only smoke, they smoke these things for 14 hours. 14 hours they go through and they only do so many of them and uh, so that's why they only offer them during the weekends because when they run out they run off run out and uh, usually by about uh, late Saturday night or, or early Sunday they, uh, afternoon they, they've run out of them uh, the, the people love these things they're really really popular so Tommy and I try to go there like a Friday night or Saturday night to try to get them while they still have them and uh, we, we kind of lucked out this week. They had them, and uh, we've, uh, that's what's left of, of we, we actually ordered two of them, and that's what's left of uh, half of one. So <laughs> there you go. Um, oh, let, let me check the, uh, what's the live stream here. Oh, yeah, we have, here we go. Uh, Molly's saying, don't forget the bourbon barrels are pa uh, it Pappy Van Winkle, highly sought after bourbon. Um, okay, yeah. And she says, thanks for the toast. You're a doll. No, you're the doll, Molly. Thank you very much. I, I really, really appreciate it. I, I definitely want to order a couple more bottles of these. Uh, these are definitely ones I want to have around. And I would like to, we've got, I think we have another... Um, uh, house concert coming up. The Millers, my good friends, um, the Millers, uh, Mark and Kathy, they do a, a house concert and uh, about once or twice a month down, down the road from us in our neighborhood. And they have some great musicians on and they have a great time. I usually take down some wine. They usually have a lot of wine there, but I usually like to take a bottle or two over there with me. I think I might take them one of these because, uh, um, as a matter of fact, Mark, for, for Mark's birthday, which was a month or two ago, I gave him uh, the last, 
That was the next to the last bottle of, I bought a couple of bottles of the Baron Delay, and I gave him one of the last bottles uh, they had in store, so, um, uh, you know, wine store. So, uh, and I said, you keep this, hold on to this. It's a, it's a good wine, but uh, there are not too many of them around. <laughs> So uh, that was my, uh, I gave that to him for his birthday. And I have one bottle left that I'm saving for a very special occasion. I really like that. The Baron Delay is also a really, really good wine. Uh, that's, a, that's a Tempranillo, by the way. And uh, let's see. Yeah, it's back there. Still there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, uh, there's some good wines there at Wine Store. I really, really appreciate that. And... We're going to go to the birthdays now because I'm, I'm running along on this. And boy, whew, I said I was going to make this a short show tonight because I went two hours a couple of weeks ago and I uh, still hadn't quite recovered from it. But I tell you what, we're going to toast some birthdays. And, if, and I want to do this in anniversaries because there are a lot of very, very special friends and people whose birthdays I really uh, want to toast. And I have a list here. Chris, first one, Chris, Chris Kelly. Here's to you. I'm toasting you on your birthday. Happy birthday, buddy. This is a Chris. And also a good friend of mine, Eric. Eric Solomon. Eric, I know your birthday's uh, up now. And uh, I think it was uh, today, yesterday. Happy birthday. Eric and I go way, way back. To, um, to middle school in our early days of high school and I've told I think I've told you all about my early days of high school with uh, when I was in a film club I helped start a, a, a film club in high school and we made some films and I had a group there were a group of us that we just got together and we, we, we made films on Super 8 and uh, we did all kinds of things we did some animated films we did some some live action stuff we did you know experimented a lot with it and we did a lot of film projects for school which is actually what kind of helped us all get through school <laughs> through high school was uh, because back in the day you know people weren't making movies for for class projects I and mean, this is we're talking about back in the 70s so uh, you know if somebody could make a film especially a sound film that the, the for a pro school project that was a pretty big deal and so even if the film wasn't any good, and some of them weren't, but even if it wasn't really that great, uh, it was still almost an automatic A because, hey, they made a film. <laughs> and there's a lot of work that goes into it, that's true. And, uh, and Erica was one of the people in our group, uh, in our close circle of friends. It's more, uh, we've grown up uh, over the years, and we've stayed together, we've stuck together, and um, it, it's been more like a brotherhood than to just friends. I think of them as, as more like, uh, like brothers to me. I, I really do. Uh, very close to them all. We all still uh, keep in touch. I think Eric's in Atlanta now. He has been for a number of years. Eric, I, I, you know, if you're watching this later, uh, I don't know if you made it to Dragon Con. I know a couple other people, a couple of my other friends who did make it there this year. Here's you again. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, John. John Rice. John, this is your birthday this week as well. I want to say happy birthday. In fact, it was today, wasn't it? I believe so. Here's my good friend John. John, you gotta go way back to the days of On Force IT. Uh, known him from days working uh, as um, doing contract work on Force, and and uh, uh, you know uh, when I had my Force Field podcast and and all that sort of thing. Uh, went back when I had my computer business. And there's one other person. <coughs> Very, very special person who I want to toast. And I don't know if she, she's watching. I don't know if if, um, if she's watching. Mark, I think you're still there. You know who I'm talking about, I think. Uh, as a matter of fact, she is celebrating her birthday now. She and Tia uh, are, are out celebrating her birthday with, with her now. This is for my friend Tess. Tess, Tess Millo, this is for you. Happy, happy birthday. This is for you, Tess, and I hope you're doing very, very well. Take good care of Chi and Tia, and uh, 
Uh, they're both helping her celebrate her birthday this weekend. Uh, Tess uh, and we all and, and Mark, I know you know Tess. Um, pretty sure you do. Um, you and Junie, uh, and, and um, we all go way way back. Uh, Tess has been an, uh, an old friend of, of my wife Cheese since she was uh, to, since I guess her college days. So um, so, so they go pretty far back. They go pre they work together. Uh, uh, when you, uh, uh, she was a nurse here. They worked together for, for a while. And um, they're really, really good friends. Good old, old good friends. And uh, here's you once again, Tess. And we have some anniversaries, some also some anniversaries that I want to toast. You know what? I've got to fill this glass again because I'm going to be doing a lot of toasting. <laughs> this is why I do, you know, okay. I really do appreciate all my friends, and that's why I toast your birthdays and your anniversaries. There's also, you know, but let's face it. Come on, it's it's also an okay. It's not an excuse. It's a it's an opportunity to drink more wine. So, um, for if you have a birthday or anniversary come up, uh, coming up, or that's just happened, uh, don't. Um, don't be shy. Tell me about it, and I'll, I'll gladly toast you. Got to finish the bottle, right? And Jonathan says, uh, uh, what is your glassware? What is your glassware? Well, what I'm using is, <clears throat> this is a genuine crystal glass from Cooper's Hawk uh, Winery and Restaurant in Orlando, Florida. Uh, Cooper's Hawk, uh, the, the winery, the Cooper's Hawk Winery is based in... Uh, I say it's Chicago, I think, in that area. Um, now I have to go back and check, and I don't remember right offhand. The wine's kicking in, <laughs> but they have uh, a number of, of wines, and some of them are very good. In fact, uh, one of the second wine we reviewed here was the Super Tuscan, and that was from the Cooper's Hawk Winery. Now that was one they imported, but it's actually all their wine. Um, I have another one here that's a Tempranillo and that I picked up while I was there. I, I was there when I went to PodFest 2019 in Orlando, and they have a Cooper's Walk Winer restaurant that was part of the the hotel that was, it was attached to the hotel that we were staying at. And I would go there, and they had a really nice wine tasting there too, that you, you could go in and, and uh, taste a lot of their wines. Uh, they had the restaurant there where they, uh, they actually made the pastas fresh right there in the restaurant. It wasn't anything that was brought in. They, they actually made them from scratch in the restaurant. And uh, my wife, she, she, she just adored the pasta. She, just, she loves eating there. Now, she doesn't care much for the hotel. We stay there for a couple of years for, for the last couple of pod fests. And they're going to be doing the next pod fest in 2020 in a different hotel. I think it's going to be the Orlando Rosen, I think. Um, but the, um, or maybe, maybe some Marriott, I, I can't remember off hand, but the, the, where we were staying before the last two years, she did not really care much for the hotel. There's some stories about that I'll share another time perhaps, but she really, really loved the restaurant and she really liked the pasta. In fact, we went there both times, uh, we went there each year. She, she specifically wanted to order the pasta, the spaghetti there. Uh, because it was really that good, but their wines are also great. The, there's a chain; it's it's kind of a chain. Uh, they have the Cooper's Hawk restaurants around, and, and it's sort of a chain ac across the country. But there's one in Orlando off International Drive, and um, I, I think there are uh, several others peppered around various parts of of the U.S. But the, their wines are are very very good. I really enjoy their wines. They have uh, really nice. Really nice wines. I did the tasting, which is why I brought back the Tempranillo, and that was like a thirty-dollar bottle, uh, right there, uh, which is not too bad. The, the one that's in the orange, orange label, and the, the sitting right next to the Overstone, by the way, the Overstone I, I got from wine store. <laughs> so, uh, Matt, thank you. A toast to you. A toast to you too. I hope you're drinking. Are you drinking anything, Matt? What What are you drinking? If If uh, tell me what What uh, you're having. If you're drinking anything at all. Um, 
like to know. But anyway, uh, to answer uh, your question, Jonathan, I, I picked this up at, uh, that, at the Weiner restaurant, and I picked up, uh, I only got two of them. In fact, it was kind of a deal. I, I got a couple bottles of wine, and I think their glassware was something like, uh, I mean, it was like, seven or eight dollars for for the glass but they gave me a cut me a really good deal they they gave the glasses to me for like one or two bucks uh because i bundled them with uh, a few bottles of their wine so i got a really good deal on the glasses and the glasses are really nice i really like these that's why i purchased them i, I wish i'd purchased a set of four of them i only got two um I don't know if I'm going to go back there anytime soon. I'd, I'd have to go back there specifically to go visit the restaurant, which I, I could do. But uh, it's once again, it's on International Drive, and if you're not, not familiar with that area, that's that's the tourist section of of Orlando, and uh, it is just a mess. It is just a real mess to to get to, and and to come from. So you you really really. If you want to go down there, you really have to have a reason to go down there to, to, to fight all that traffic and everything. So it's um, not my favorite place. But um, anyway, the, let's see, the anniversaries. Remember, folks, this is a stream of consciousness type of show. I have some a few light show notes, but this is just kind of off the cuff stream of consciousness. And for those of you on Twi uh, Twitch, uh, I know a lot of people say, uh, yeah, this is an off-the-cuff show, and I know a lot of them really aren't, but this really is an off-the-cuff show. It, it, I don't have a lot of this plan. I don't do a lot of rehearsing beforehand. Uh, Instagram, if you're watching you know, any Instagram people, I know a lot of uh, people that, that do, uh, that produce their, sometimes maybe overproduce their videos for Instagram that, uh, you know, they really just rehearse everything. Uh, to death and just look maybe it looks too perfect that's not what I'm doing here this is just a stream of consciousness kind of thing it's just for fun uh, so getting back to anniversaries um, oh let's see Matt says uh, oh you know it uh, oh let's, let me go back up here Jonathan says uh, you love Southern Bell yes Matt says you know oh you know it he also says 2013 Carlisle, Carlisle Zinn you know, um, I love a good Zinfandel, and um, you carry that, right, man? Oh, no, you're, that's what you're drinking. You're drinking a 2013 Carlisle Zin. Is that available at this store? I've heard of Carlisle. I never never tried it, but I like a really good Zinfandel, and uh, I really would... Uh, is, it, is it really... Uh, is it really dry? Is... 2013, I'll have to write that down, see if I can get a hold of one, because I like to try new wines, anything that anyone else has tried. Look, by the way, if there's anything else that you have uh, tried that you really like, that you think would be a good wine for me to try, let me know. I'd be happy to, to, to uh, uh, give it a try, to check it out. Uh, did we lose the stream for a second? Looks like things have hung up there for a moment. There we go. We're back. Uh, that happens a Saturday night. There we go. Um, this Cooper and Thief, that was a recommendation. So, look, I'll, I'll try anything once. I'll try it once. You know, as long as... Uh, I'm glad this was not $60 a bottle. I'll have to say that. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't 30 Now, these things... I've seen it around for $30, $40 a bottle online, but I I've, I, I wouldn't pay that much for it. And, and to be honest, I think I paid... 1098 for that bottle and, and I'm not sure that I would do that again but um, you know I'll take a chance I'll try anything I'll try anything once I'm glad I tried this one that's for sure and I'm going to have some more of it and uh, Matt the Carlisle Zinfandel um, definitely I, th I think I'd like to try that uh, if you're drinking it must be pretty good uh, anniversaries okay let's get back to the anniversaries okay anniversaries I want to uh, wish uh, Mike and Dorothy Smith a happy anniversary. And this is a very, uh, very special one. This is a very special one for them, uh, for sure. Mike, uh, Mike and I go back. Uh, we go back way back to Tech Podcast Network, and uh, when I started the Force Field, and he was uh, uh, starting up and doing the Mike Tech Show. He he does a podcast called the Mike Tech Show, and he does a live stream along with this podcast, just sort of like this is. Now, of course, I I repurposed this into a podcast, 
after the fact. But he's he was doing that before I was repurposing uh, his his. Um, oh, actually, he was doing the podcast and then the live streaming at the same time. And I watched his show for many years. I was I was kind of a, a semi regular there. Um, to, like like everyone here is in the chat now. Uh, I, I followed up on his show. I was a big fan of his show. Still am. Uh, I don't get a chance to watch it much these days, but when I get a chance to, I like to, to uh, check in and watch it. He is an IT guy. He's, very, uh, he's an, uh, an IT professional, and uh, he really knows his stuff. He's got his, uh, his business and, uh, that he's had for many, many years, and he does an excellent, excellent job covering a lot of different topics in IT, uh, computer-related things. Uh, he just uh, te- a lot of tech stuff, and uh, he and his wife Dorothy are celebrating their anniversary this week. And I want to say happy anniversary to Mike and Dorothy. They've been married for forty years. Yes, forty years. You don't hear that much anymore, and I think that's quite a quite a milestone. My wife Chi and I have been married for 25 years and, and you know some people say wow 25 years that's a that's a long time. You know it, it doesn't really seem that long to me because my wife and I were just so much a part of each other. I'm so much a part of her. I, she just she's so much a part of me. I just I, you know I can't imagine my life without her. And I don't I don't want to. And um I would definitely like for us to live long enough to see 40 years or 50 years or maybe longer. That would be that would be great. I mean, I I see myself growing older. I I, I want to say older because I'm, we're already old, <laughs> but uh, I'd like to see myself growing old. Her older with with her with my wife. Well, Mike and Dorothy, 40 years, you know, that's, that's still an accomplishment because so many, you hear of so many uh, broken marriages and, and so many people that, that don't make it nearly that long. And um, I think that, and, and they're still very much in love. And I want to say, Mike and Dorothy, this, this is for you. In fact, I should toast you again. Just because I'm really impressed, 40 years, that is, that is something. Happy anniversary. And it's time to reload because we have another anniversary coming up as well. This is for Ravi and Vina. And they're in Orlando, but uh, uh, Ravi is, a, is a, another podcaster. And um, he uh, also does uh, podcast really, you know, coaching for, for, uh, for um, podcasting for people that are getting into podcasts and that sort of thing. This is to, to Ravi and, and, and Vina. Happy anniversary. Ravi does some very, very uh, creative things with his videos and in, in his podcasts. He's done things with puppets and uh, I think he's even done some animated stuff and whatever he does does a lot of creative things with it he's he's very i think he's very innovative in that in that sense and i appreciate that sort of thing because uh as a podcaster myself and as, as a video uh, youtuber and that sort of thing i i that's a lot of what i've done is a lot of experimenting i've done a, a, just tried a lot of different things and and some of it tried to see if oh maybe i can monetize this or do that uh and uh, some of it's just been for fun, like this, like the wine stream. This is basically just something I'm doing for fun, just because I'm having a great time. And uh, like I said, I'm not a wine professional. I'm not a sommelier. And I'm not a, uh, you know, I'm just a regular guy. I'm a, I'm, I'm a uh, an average Joe, an average Rick, who likes to drink wine. And I think that's 90 90 nine percent of of everybody out there that drinks wine there is a f- small subset of people that are what others would call wine snobs and there are some people that that are wine aficionados of some sort or uh you know sommeliers or uh you know very very um very knowledgeable about wine and they can appreciate a really good wine, but then there, uh, there's another sub. Okay, there are three subsets, I should say. 
there's another subset that's that's most okay there's another subset at the very very bottom well okay maybe that's wrong is this not pc okay there's another subset who just like to drink and they'll drink any wine off the shelf and uh, those you know some of them will drink the you know the the yeah the md 2020s they'll drink you know a lot of that that's uh, that that's that's definitely different that's completely different okay um and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dissing them at all. It's just that that's what they like, that's what they prefer, and that's okay. Frankly, I can't drink that stuff because it's just too. A lot of it's too sweet. A lot of it's like drinking cough syrup. It's just not my my thing. I can't do that. Um, you know, there are people that drink the two buck chuck. Yeah, I've got the two buck chuck and the Oak Creek and stuff like that over there. The the two ninety eight three dollar bottles of wine. Uh, uh, I've done it. I've done it. I've had the two buck chuck when I didn't have any money, and and I'm I'm not rich by any means, but come on, we've, we've I think we've all been there at some point. And two buck chuck, that's what you drink when there's nothing else to drink, right? But um, you know, really, most of the rest of us, I'd say about ninety eight percent of the rest of the Amer- American public and most of everybody around the world, when they drink wine, it's not so much to to really uh, scrutinize the wine as it is to just have a nice bottle of wine, usually to pair with a nice dinner, sometimes at a party. And it's just, it, it's, they just want to have something that's decent to drink, that they like, that uh, tastes good to them, um, that can appeal to their palate, that uh, they can just sit back and enjoy. And I think that's most of us. And that, that's basically what I am. I, I know I'm, I'm not a wine expert, but I know what I like and I know what I don't like. I know what tastes good. I know what doesn't taste good. Um, let's see. What is that? The, the uh, what was that other thing that I had back here? Okay. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to put down any wines tonight. I'm going to just put down, I'm going to put this one down, but uh, I was going to go somewhere with that, but no. I'm not here to put down wines. I'm not here to put down anybody and their preference for wine. Everyone has their own preference for wine. And that's okay for them. That's not, you know, the two buck chuck, that's not me. You know, the mad dog, that's not me. Uh, um, then again, I can't afford, if I could afford a $100 bottle of wine, I don't know that I could 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 drink a $100 bottle of wine every night. Um, uh, because... Just because it's a hundred dollar bottle of wine doesn't mean it's a very good wine. We've had this discussion many times. Look at this. This bottle of wine cost me. What was it? Um, it was uh, seventeen ninety nine. There are hundred. There are wines that cost fifty, sixty dollars, seventy dollars a bottle, uh, and I've had I've had some of them that. Uh, unfortunately, most of them were given to me because <laughs> I don't spend seventy dollars, five dollars for a bottle of wine unless it's really, really special. Um, but I, I've had seventy dollar, seventy five dollar bottles of wine, eighty dollar bottles of wine that are pretty much uh, that are comparable to some of the twenty and thirty dollar bottles of wine. And there are reasons for that too. And I, I'm pretty sure Matt probably could could tell you some of those reasons uh, that I'm not going to go into right now. Um, oh, Matt, uh, by the way, Matt says, uh, Jonathan Snyder was nice enough to share. I'm really enjoying this one. Big fruit, big fruit. He's talking about the 2013 Carlisle Zen that I was asking about. Jonathan uh, Snyder was nice enough to share. I'm really enjoying this one. Big fruit, big fruit. So it's really, really fruity one. I like that. First of all, I like a good Zinfandel. I really do. I'd like, kind of like to try that. Hopefully it's not too pricey. But uh, Jonathan says, do you taste Spain? I have found it to be a bit sweet. Um, Jim Bowers loves the sugar. It does not taste... Here's the thing, uh, Jonathan. It, it does not taste sweet to me. Um, it really doesn't taste that sweet. This did... It was, I, I didn't like that too much. Of course, that wasn't from Spain. Uh, that was from uh, here. <laughs> but uh, uh, here, I mean, U.S. But um, 
this this is a Spanish wine, and I you know what I love a really good Spanish wine. I really I, and I I do, and I've had quite a few that I've really really enjoyed. As a matter of fact, I've had several Spanish wines from wine store that I've really really enjoyed, and uh, and, and I've had a few there that were kind of like mm, okay, you know, I, I buy another bottle of it, but it's, it's not my favorite wine, but I, I do definitely have some favorites. Um, but this one, I think this Southern Bell is probably um, is probably one of my new favorites. I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna keep, pick up another couple of bottles of this. Where was it going uh, with with uh, any of this? I was going somewhere. Um, <laughs> got uh, got sidetracked again. Oh, you know one thing. One more person I want to toast. I want to po- I want to toast my good friend uh, Todd Cochran. Todd, who is um, a podcasting guru, he's he's been in the podcast uh, business longer than me. Uh, he started in, in 2004, I believe, and uh, he's the host of Geek News Central and also host of a new media show. And he is the CEO of Blueberry.com, one of one of the biggest podcast uh, uh, hosting companies out there. Uh, he's a CEO of uh, Blueberry.com, raw, RawVoice.com, and the upcoming. He's he's also um, a founder and a host of the upcoming uh, People's Choice Podcast Awards. That's the original podcast awards. Now iHeart, iHeart made a big deal earlier this year saying, "Hey, we're doing the first podcast awards. We're doing the very first podcast awards ever." Well, it, it may have been the first podcast awards for iHeart, but it was not the first podcast award. The People's Choice Podcast Award is the very first podcast awards. I know because I was there. I was there when they did the first podcast awards. Um, so uh, that's uh, so whatever they say that that's big media talking about uh, uh, podcasting, but uh, and their view of podcast history. But Todd Cochran is the founder of the the original podcast awards, and it's coming up again on September 29th, which is also International uh, Podcast Day. Um, anyway, I, I wanted to uh, I wanted to uh, toast Todd because Todd just recently he moved he made a big move from Hawaii. That's where he was living with his family in, in Hawaii for so many years. He moved from Hawaii and he, uh, he moved back to the mainland. And uh, he, set him, he set up a really nice studio there, Blueberry's uh, new studio. Uh, they've got, they just finished uh, a really, really beautiful uh, new podcast and uh, video streaming studio that's just, just pretty awesome. And he did his first stream there for, uh, I think it was for his Geek News Central show. And I uh, did a really, really fine job with it. And it looks fabulous. I was really impressed with uh, with with his setup, and uh, he's he's back uh, back in the saddle, so to speak, on that. And uh, I know he was on hi- hiatus for a little bit, uh, trying to get everything set up, trying to get his new podcast uh, studio together and everything. So, uh, and I think he's he's down. As a matter of fact, he's down there with uh, Rob Greenley this week and uh, doing. Um, uh, doing Dragon Con, and uh, we couldn't make it. Tommy and I were actually planning to go to Dragon Con before. We we didn't make it this year. We we've done it the last couple of years. Uh, I think uh, Tommy's making plans to go next year for his Cube Command pro- podcast. But uh, we'll probably do that next year. Anyway, here's to you, Todd, and your new podcast studio. I know you're really excited about it. We're excited about it for you. And there's to Todd. Nelly has joined us. Good to see you, Nelly. And and uh, and uh, join us in the chat. Tell me what what you're doing. Tell me what you're up to. How you're doing. Hope you're doing very well. And Ron has just joined us in the chat. Ron, it's great to see you. I haven't seen. I know. Uh, you know, Ron. Uh, I know Ron from many many years ago. And it's been a while since. Uh, I know it's been a long long time since I've, I've talked to you. But I'm glad you're here. And if you're if you're having some wine on a Saturday night. Tell me what you're drinking. Tell me what you're not drinking. Tell me what you like to be drinking. Tell me what you like to see me drinking. <laughs> but but tonight we're drinking the Southern Bell red wine. I purchased it at wine store-online.com. And it's very good. I really recommend it. I did try it with a little bit of this beef uh, rib, and it was pretty good. I did not try it with the uh, 
you know, as a matter of fact, I probably should. I did not try it with the uh, brisket, the smoked brisket. And this this smoked brisket was from, I hope it's still okay to you, because I've been sitting out here for about an hour. <laughs> hmm. I'll try this and see how it pairs. You know, if my, Ron, if my mom was here, she'd say, don't talk with your mouth full. But she's not here, so there you go. It does bring out, it, it does enhance uh, some of the barbecue flavor of the, of the brisket. I could, I could drink this with a brief brisket, a special one that's been smoked for a while. I, I could drink this with that. And, and I can't say that about a lot of wines, uh, but I, I think I can say this about this one. I, I wouldn't expect this to go really well with the smoked meat. I think it would be better with a grilled meat, um, but it's okay. It's okay. Maybe it's just because I like this wine so much. Maybe it's okay. Uh, Matt says, Rick, we are watching your live stream at our mountain house as a family. Really enjoy the stream tonight. We open a nice bottle of Napa Cabernet in your honor. Cheers. Well, Matt, thank you. I'm, I am, um, <laughs> I am, uh, I'm humbled. I'm humbled. I'm, and I'm, I'm impressed and I'm, I, I'm really, th thank you very much. I appreciate it. And once again, here's to you and your family. Enjoy the, um, the Napa Valley wine. And uh, wine is great. You know the thing about wine and, and why, you know, some people that don't really understand why other people drink wine uh, just because they say, well, I've had some wine, I don't like it. You know, my daughter, uh, Tia, when she turned 21, I had her dry, try on her 21st birthday. I set down a bottle of red and a bottle of white, and I had her try a little bit of each. She didn't really like either one. It was just not her thing for wine. And she really didn't understand why, why I had such a fascination with wine. Now, I'm Italian. My name's Savoia. It's an, it's an old Italian name. Come from Italy, northern Italy. My, my grandparents were, came right off the boat from, from uh, uh, northern Italy. And, of course, uh, you know, as, as the legend goes, <laughs> the family legend goes, we may be descended from, uh, from the royal family, uh, Savoy family. Shh, don't tell anybody. I don't know how true that is. My sister Gina, she was here tonight. I don't see her here in the chat, but if she, if she was here tonight. Uh, she, she had done some extensive research in this, and I still don't think we have a definitive answer on whether or not we're actually blood-related to, to the, um, to the uh, uh, kingdom of Savoy in that line, but... Uh, she she did a lot of research into this, but it, apparently that's how we got our name. Uh, apparently, my grandfather came over from, on the boat, sort of uh, apparently uh, a little bit under the radar, so to speak, because the the uh, the king one of the uh, I guess the king at the time had been exiled and and uh, some of the family had been sent away and. Uh, uh, and there, there are rumors. There are all kind of kinds of rumors. Uh, the one that my grandfather was there was an illegitimate child there that was a, between the king and a uh, a, a handmaid, and uh, that, that he might have been the illegitimate child. I don't know. I really I don't know if any of this is true or not. To be honest, I don't know. So I'm not speculating. Could I have royal blood? Uh, she teases about uh, she teases me about that all the time. I don't know. Uh, I really have no idea. Um, I'm not ready to go to, to do a, a, a DNA test for that, <laughs> to be honest. I'm, I'm not sure I trust DNA tests for, for different reasons, but um, who knows? Who knows? But I am Italian. Wine is in my blood. If you're Italian, the wine is in your blood, right? Yeah, more or less. And my family, I don't know of anyone in my family... Who doesn't drink, <laughs> or he hasn't drank? My dad was really big. Now, my dad was one person that he was one of those guys that now he wasn't, you know, drinking Mad Dog, 
But he's one of those uh, kind of persons who could drink a three or four dollar bottle of wine. It was it was just as good to him as a forty dollar bottle of wine. And I can test to that because I there there's stories I could tell you, but I can test to that uh, a true story, personal story. Um, I bought him a fifty dollar bottle of wine once, and um, and then you know it was it was actually supposed to be a keeper for a while. But I, I knew knowing my dad, I knew he was just going to open up and drink it like it was any other bottle of wine. Uh, so I asked him one time, I think a couple of years later, I said, uh, how was that wine? That wine I gave you for, for uh, uh, I can't remember if it was birthday or, or holiday or something. I always was his birthday, I think. And I said, how was the bottle of wine? He says, hey, it was good. It was good. I'm like, Dad, that was a $40. And I can't remember what the, the wine was, but it was a really nice wine. I mean, I, I handpicked that out. It was a really good wine. And uh, it was kind of like, oh, yeah, it was good. It was, you know, it was bottle of wine. You know, that was my dad. To him, wine was wine. You just drank wine, you know. It was one, one bottle of wine was as good as another. And so, you know, and surprisingly to, to a lot of people, that's kind of what wine is. You know, it's like, oh, let's go get a bottle of wine, drink it with this, drink it with that. And some people will pair, you know, you go to a restaurant and the waiter will ask, well, what would you like to have, you know, uh, suggestions? Yeah, you could pair it with this, you could pair it with that. Some people just go out in a restaurant and say, hey, I'll have this bottle of wine to go with this. And, I'll have, you know, and not really understanding that that there is a pairing process there. There are some wines that go better with some foods than others, and some wines that um, really are not meant to, to be had with, with some foods. The wine itself is a type of food, really. And there is a, there's an art to wine. There's an art to making wine. There is an art to, uh, to uh, fermenting wine. And the thing about wine is that it's it's not just a drink. It is something where there are so many subtle nuances to a wine. It, look, this this is a wine. This isn't grape juice. It's, it's you know grape juice. You can just sit there and drink grape juice, and it tastes like grape juice. Wines. You have so many different wines, and they can all taste like other things or a combination of other things, like like this wine. Where you taste the floral notes, and you taste the you taste certain fruits, and you, you taste certain berries in it. You can taste nuts and things like that in 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 the wine. Some wines that that uh, a couple of these here that have chocolate notes in them. They have kind of a chocolatey taste to them. They have kind of a uh, or a nutty taste to them. They can taste here this this Overstone wine. I purchased this, and, and as a matter of fact, this was the original wine that I was going planning to open at night until until Molly, and rightly so, said try this one. And I'm glad she did because this is uh, this turned out to be really good. But this was actually the the uh, the Overstone was the one that I was originally going to open up because I've had this sitting here for a few months, and I kept kept thinking, you know, we got to open this at some point. This is a New Zealand wine. This is New Zealand wine, and I was really, um, the reason I bought this was because I did a tasting over at Wine Store several months ago, and uh, it, what struck me about this wine was that it, and now the thing is, in New Zealand wines, they have a tendency, and I know I've said this, uh, that it was, uh, I, I misspoke before when I was, I was talking about um, uh, wines from, from uh Australia, and I was saying, well, I, Australian wines are really citrusy, and that, that was the case. I was actually really referring to New Zealand wines. New Zealand wines are do have a tendency to all be kind of citrusy, um, not all of them, but a lot of them do. And um, the thing about this one is that what struck me when I did tasting on that, it was a very uh, strong uh, grapefruit. I tasted grapefruit in this wine. I thought, wow, that's that's something. You know, that's, that's worth getting a bottle for and trying it out. Uh, grapefruit. Well, that's what basically what wine is. You have all these little subtle nuances to wines that uh, when you under, start understanding wine, and it helps you develop appreciation for wine and winemaking and the people that spend years and years and generations um, working on a wine... Uh, to get it just 
just a certain way. There's so many things that go, there's so many elements that go into wine grow into to go into wine making but also go uh, go into grape growing growing the grapes themselves i mean the different regions where the grapes are grown the different uh climates uh the weather patterns every year uh depending on the weather pattern if it's if it's dry uh, uh weather or if it's particularly wet for that year or if or maybe if um you, you know the 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 weather's kind of mixed you get uh you know it's kind of cold it's warm during during the growing season there and also the ground the the actual soil that each uh grapevine is grown in has uh some uh, it, it definitely has a a a um a bearing on how that grape is going to, to taste, how it's going to turn out, and ultimately uh, how the wine is going to, to turn out. Then, you you know, you have the grapes. That's one thing. You have the grapes, and there's so many things that go into making the grape taste like what you want the grape taste like. And then when you go into the winemaking process and you start making the wine, there are so many elements that go into making the wine that... that uh, that can that the wine can turn out one way or, or completely a different way, and, and anywhere in between. So and that's why vintages, different vintages, are going to be very very different. You can have a 2016 vintage of this wine could turn out to be very very different from a 2017 vintage uh, or 2018 vintage of, of of the same wine. The same wine from the same vineyard can be completely different from one season to the next. And it may not seem like much to some people, but it, you know, if you really get down to it, when you start tasting the wine and you start developing a palate for, wait a minute, I taste floral notes in this. I taste blackberry. I taste cherry. As so many, a lot of the, the wines that I like do, um, have have different cherry notes to them because cherry is my, my favorite f uh, flavor actually. But licorice, chocolate, you know, nuts, vanilla notes, um, things like that. You you start tasting different things in the wine, and you start tasting a combination of things in the wine. And you got to step back and you think about wait a minute, this all came from a grape. This didn't come from from vanilla extract. This didn't come from cherries. This didn't. This did not come from blackberries or blueberries or uh, you know any other kind of berries. Uh, it, this didn't come from from other uh, fruits. This all came from a grape. And when you realize that that there is there's a uh, just just how much you can get out of one grape, out of one fruit, that grape, and get all these different notes and all these different flavors, combination of them. I think it's fascinating. I think it's pretty amazing. You you start to develop a a new appreciation for for grapes and for wine and the winemaking process. And then then you start to realize that you know what. There is a lot more to wine than just opening a bottle and drinking it and say, "Oh yeah, it's pretty good wine." You know, it's, it's, uh, you know so it's fifteen percent alcohol. It should be more in there. You know, uh, does that make any sense? It does to me because I, I tell you, I, I I drink a bottle of wine and I'm not just tasting wine. I'm tasting um, this is this is artistry. We're talking people that grow grapes for wine, people that make wine. These are artisans. They're not just, this isn't just a process. This is artistry is, is what it is. And there's a lot of thought. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of chemistry that goes into it. There's, there's a lot of, of research. There's a lot of time-tested technique that goes into it. Some of these people put a lot. They put their hearts and souls, and they put their, they they put their lives into. And some of them do for generations. They put their lives into making that perfect 
grape, that perfect vintage, that perfect wine. And that's really what, you know, when you, when you open a bottle of wine, I'll tell you what, when I go down there, I got a couple more bottles of this. I can guarantee you that, um, and, and maybe it will come from the same barrel, maybe it will come from the same, you know, so some of them made in tanks now, things like that. It, it, whatever it was made, if I'm fortunate enough to get bottles from the same vintage, from the same, um, from the same barrel, uh, that's the only this right here, that's the last time, this is the last time I will ever experience this exact moment of wine. Uh, because everyone is a little bit different. There are so many nuances to it. Um, and uh, that's one reason why you really want to appreciate the wine when you open it. A good bottle of wine. Because when you open that bottle of wine, uh, you realize this, this is an experience that you're not going to duplicate, no matter no matter what. If you you get you can get two of the same bottles from from uh, from the same dis distributor from different years or from different batches, it's not going to be the same wine. This is going to be the only experience you have of this wine that's unique to this bottle, and and uh, you know that's that's. Uh, that's what wine is about. That's what enjoying wine is about. Uh, it's it, This is not just drinking wine. We're talking about art, artistry. We're, we're talking about uh, uh, something that's really, really unique. Anyway, I, I, I kind of went off on a tangent here. <laughs> I did. But that's what this is, this stream of consciousness uh, kind of show. Matt, thanks for joining. I really appreciate you joining us tonight. I mean, I'm going, starting to go along here. I said I was going to make this a short show, and I didn't. And Chi has joined us in the chat, my lovely wife, Chi. And she says, we are also watching you from the car. She's in the car. And she says, all eight of us, eight of us. So I, I say, here's to all of you in the car. Please do not drink and drive. And this is not just for them, because I'm pretty sure they're not. Hopefully they're not, right, Chi? Uh, this is to Chi and everyone in the car. And this is something else that's important. Enjoy the wine for what it is, but enjoy it in the comfort of your home, your apartment, your hotel, wherever you are. Please do not drink and drive. It's one thing that I don't believe in. Yes, I am drinking through a lot of this bottle of wine, but I am a proponent of drinking in moderation, so I'm probably going to close this up very shortly. I definitely say do not drink and drive. Um, I've lost people, and I've known people who've, who've been severely hurt in, uh, in uh, mishaps um, where... Uh, where alcohol was involved. Um, I uh, lost a nephew uh, who, who I cared about very much, who we all loved very much, from a drunk driver. Um, I've, I've, known, um, I've known other people, I've had other friends who've lost people from drunk driving. Uh, my dad... Uh, and I'm not going to go into that right now, but but my dad had a few uh, narrow episodes. It just it just turned me off to, to that sort of thing at all. If I drink, in fact, uh, gee, if if I'm going to have a if I'm going to have a glass of wine at dinner, if it's just one little glass of wine at dinner, and I'm having dinner and I'm there for a while and it's okay and I'm there for a couple hours, uh, usually that's that's not an issue. But if I'm if I'm going to be drinking wine, like if I go down to the house con that's one reason I like the Miller's house concert because I can just go down there and drink some wine and walk back home. You know, I, there's no drink and walk uh, uh, um, thing unless I trip and hurt myself, but um, it's 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 convenient. But um, and I usually don't drink that much anyway. But uh, if I'm go having a two three glasses of wine, I'm not driving home, and and if I'm and if I'm there, then I think that I might have two or three glasses of wine. I'm not going to do it because uh, my family's more important to me. Um, 
than than and and, uh, and my friends and other people around me. That it's more important to me than than just having a, a glass and, or just having just sit there drinking. And, and but I generally that's why I generally don't drink uh, in bars and things like that. I, I if I, especially if I'm going to be driving. Look, if you're in a if you're drinking out drinking, take an Uber. Or lift or whatever it is, you know, do do that. Get a friend drive drive you home. Do not drink and do not get in your car. Okay, just don't do it. It's it's not a good idea. That's my that's my uh, disclaimer here because uh, once again I I'm not a I'm definitely not a proponent of that. I don't encourage it. I do encourage you in the comfort of your home. To enjoy wine, as, as Matt and his family are doing, enjoying their in their in their mountain house. <laughs> you know, I have done that too, Matt. Um, we had a weekend with uh, with my family, and we we rented a uh, a house in the mountains for the weekend, and we just sat back and we we just enjoyed ourselves, and that was one of the things that we did. We brought some wine. Uh, my, my nephew, uh, brought some beer and we sat back and we just had a, had a fabulous time and, uh, it was, it was a wonderful weekend and, uh, that's a really nice, especially if, if it's in the winter months and you're up, uh, skiing or something and then you're in mountain, uh, re retreat and you're snowed in or something. That's what you got going, a nice fire going and you got the wine flowing and the beer and, uh, things going on like that. It's just, it's just, it's like perfect, you know? But um, Matt, it sounds like you're having a great time with your family, and uh, and that's good. Once again, I'll drink to you. But um, uh, once again, do not drink and drive. Don't text and drive. I saw you know what? I saw so many people. I was I, I commute back and forth to Rock Hill, South Carolina. That's where I work. That's my day job, and. Uh, Almost every day, I encounter people that are on their cell phones that are either reading something off their cell phone or they're talking to their cell phone or they're texting. And, and, and it's, it just alarms me because you go, when you're doing 65, 70 miles an hour down, or, or more down the highway as some of these people are doing, um, and you're driving the length of a football field in 3.5 seconds, a lot can happen. You know, you look down in your cell phone and you're texting and you're taking your eyes off the road for anything less than two seconds. Anything can happen there. And, and, and you, that's just a disaster waiting uh, to happen. You, you don't want to do that. You really don't. But it just amazes me how many people with all of the information out there and all of the warnings about texting and driving. It just, well, same thing with drinking and driving. You, know, you got people drunks in the car. But you know what? It, it's not an excuse. But I'm just saying that, yeah, when you're drunk and you get in the car, you're impaired, so your judgment is off there to begin with, which is one reason you shouldn't be getting in the car in the first place. But people who are texting and driving, that's distracted driving, these people should know better. They, they're, they're not, it's not like they're drinking or they're smoking or something or whatever it, you know they're, they're going in there with a with a with a clear head more or less and they're texting while they're driving which is just utter stupidity if you text and drive let me say this that is stupid okay and people who text and drive should not own a cell phone or a car i i, I just say that People who text and drive shouldn't own a cell phone and they should not own a car because obviously they're not, they're not responsible enough to handle either one. And that's my rant for the night. That's a short rant, by the way. Okay, well, I'm going to close up this, uh, this wine stream here shortly because we're, we're just about there. I wanted, there were some other things I wanted to get to. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to Sean, my friend Sean Yesner of Yesner Law. He's in Orlando. He's he's uh, he's an attorney. Now he's not a uh, uh, a, a uh, an attorney for people who uh, drink and drive, but he he's an attorney. He's a uh, bankruptcy law attorney. He's a uh, financial attorney, and um, 
uh, he does a great podcast, and I listen to him regularly. I listen to him just about every week. Um, he does a podcast called, um, uh, uh, well, it's, it's, it's the um, uh, Crushing Debt, sorry, this is kicking in, the Crushing Debt podcast. And I usually listen to it on Alexa. I, I'll say, Alexa, play the Crushing Debt podcast, and, and, uh, and then I, I can kick back and listen to them. But uh, Sean does a great job of uh, covering. He, he, what he is is an attorney for uh, for uh, financial law, for for uh, debt relief, for uh, bankruptcy law, for things like that. And he, he has he does a great podcast where he comes out with all of the, he has guests on his podcast. Oftentimes, I was listening to a couple of them earlier this week. Um, where they were talking about uh, uh, profit first, I believe, is what that is. And uh, basically, he helps people to, to manage their debt and to get out of debt. And if you're in debt and you live in Florida, he's definitely the person to, to talk to if you're having some trouble with, with debt. Uh, he's definitely somebody to talk to, to to help you out with some of that. But even if you don't live in Florida, he has some great advice. His podcast is really good. There's a lot of good information to help you with um, with with debt relief so you definitely want to give his, his podcast a, a listen uh, it's the crushing debt podcast and uh, I really enjoy his show it's easy to listen to it's like about half an hour or less uh, for each episode it's just very easy to listen to but it's a lot of great content um, so I want to say a shout out to you Sean and, and also a toast to Sean appreciate it also, I know that a lot of my friends in Florida, I, I, want to, I don't want to um, close off without mentioning this, a lot of my friends in Florida are battening down the hatches for Hurricane Dorian. Hurricane Dorian is bearing down on the East Coast. Um, of course, for those of you who know that I've, I've lived in Florida for, for 35 years. I was born there. I uh, lived in, in O Town. I lived in in the Orlando area for 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 many many years, and uh, in surrounding areas, and uh, from where, kind of sort of grew up in Winter Park. Lived in Oviedo. Um, you know, met my wife and got married in Florida. Had two kids in Florida. They were both born and they're both natural born Floridians. Um, we have a lot of roots in Florida that we'll always have, uh, even though we've been living in North Carolina for 12 years. So it's it's kind of uh, personal for us, seeing a lot of our friends are, are, and relatives, family. She has family living in Florida, in, in the Orlando area. Um, having to watch our family and friends uh, prepare for this hurricane. From last I heard, it was going to be something like a category. I, I hadn't really been watching tonight, but uh, the weather reports. But last weather reports I heard is it's going to be hitting at about a category four or so. Um, that's pretty serious. That's very serious. Now I have heard uh, rumors that I might be heading up tour towards uh, North Carolina after that. That's something that we have to be concerned about. So if you're in North Carolina or anywhere in Georgia. Um, South Carolina, anywhere up uh, past the coast uh, of Florida, then uh, yeah, we have to worry about the two. Probably not till next Thursday or so, but uh, it's something we have to be aware of. But for all my friends and all my family in Florida, I want to uh, uh, wish you all um, uh, to be to say stay safe, and uh, hope you'll be all right. Um, I, I, I know that that's I've ridden out various hurricanes. I've ridden out hurricanes before in Florida. It's not that's nothing new to me. Been there, done that. Um, it's not fun. Uh, they can be very destructive. This one, from what I understand, it's going to slow down and and it's really going to hang around down there. And the thing is about hurricanes. I'm explaining this to my son earlier today. If the hurricane is is really really moving at a fast clip and just kind of barreling through. Um, yeah, it does some destructive. It's, it's very destructive, no doubt about that. But it, and it's one thing if it's, it's going pretty quick. But it, but it goes through quit it pretty quick, and it dumps a little rain, it dumps some wind, and then it's done. But if the hurricane slows down to a crawl or almost a standstill, and then it hangs over the state, 
those are the ones you have to worry about. Those are the ones that are the most destructive because then they're just not moving and they're just dumping rain. They're just dumping and dumping rain. And then the winds are just constantly battering. And, you know, something is... You know, if something goes by you, and unless it's a tornado or something, but if something goes by you and it's it just flashes past, and uh, it knocks over a few trees or whatever, uh, that's one thing. But if something's hanging around and just beating and beating and beating on your house or your property or trees or something for hours and hours on end, that really wears it down, and that that's really what causes the destruction. So uh, to all my family and friends in, in Florida, um, Tampa, Orlando, I think it's going to, uh, less or her, it's going to uh, uh, land around them somewhere between Fort Lauderdale and, and, uh, and um, uh, Daytona Beach. Uh, and I know those areas pretty well. Not Tampa, but uh, the Fort Lauderdale and, and Daytona. I know those areas very well. I know Tampa very well. I've, I've, I've been around the state a lot. Um, uh, that's 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 not gonna that's not gonna go well uh, probably and and I, 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 I you're in you're in my thoughts you, you really are and I, I hope everything goes well I think I hope everything's gonna be okay um, but um, I just want to say I'm I'm thinking about y'all I really am uh, I don't envy your position right now that's for sure. Um, to everyone else, this is a good reason to get a weather radio. I want to say, and I'm not trying to, to segue in this into a sales pitch, but, you know, I work, the full, full disclosure, I work for a company that, that sells two-way radios, and we sell weather radios. And um, by twowayradios.com. We sell a lot of weather radios and emergency radios and that sort of thing. And uh, everybody, everybody should have a weather radio. I have a weather, I have several weather radios. We, we all do. And especially in a, in a situation like this, you want to have something for emergencies. Because, you know, if the power goes out, the, the cell phones go out, cell towers go under, all you have left is a two-way radio. <laughs> that's all you have left for communication. That's why ham, that's why when, when you know, like when uh, the hurricane hit in Puerto Rico last year, uh, the only people that had any, the only means of communication were ham radio operators, uh, like myself. Uh, people that were into ham radio because that was the only means of communication out, off the island back and forth to the mainland. So, um, and in a disaster, uh, you know, a lot of hams train for this sort of thing, for emergency communications. But... Everyone can kind of prepare for this sort of thing. Make sure that you have an emergency kit and make sure that you have plenty of food and water and things in your emergency kit, but make sure you have a two-way radio in there. Um, buy two-way radios. Um, uh, my boss said, hey, um, you know, give a, uh, you mentioned the weather radios, we'll, uh, you know, mention a 5% off, we'll give you a promo code. So if you are looking for a weather radio, you can get five percent off a weather radio or any of those weather uh, any of those radios uh, by mentioning Wine Show. This is the first thing I, you mention Wine Show, uh, you can get five percent off by two-way radios on any of those radios. Not meant to really be a big sales pitch this time because it's just it, it, the timing is just so so weird. Uh, we've got this hurricane barreling down. And uh, trust me, if you've got a hurricane coming at you, uh, you, you really, you're really not going to get, you can't order a weather radio now and get one in time, okay? So 5% or no 5%. The time to get a weather radio is not now. The time to, to get a weather radio is when the weather is good, when, when there's no hurricane bearing down. But it's just something to keep in mind. Anyway, we, you've, you've got that promo code. So if you're still, if, if you look like you might be in the path of the hurricane, is it after it passes Florida, but you still got some time? Uh, from what I understand, it's not going to come near us till th Thursday or towards the end of the week. Uh, you you got some time. Use the promo code. If you need a weather radio, get one. And and look, even if you don't get it from Buy Two Way Radios, and like I said, I work for for them, so that's a full full disclosure. Um, even if, even if you don't, just just get a weather radio from somewhere and just just have some emergency, uh, so, some emergency communications handy because you just can't, uh, you can't mess around with this sort of thing. 
and, and get a get a an emergency kit together. And you know what, an emergency kit, I can say there's nothing wrong, and I'm uh, just to keep it light. There's nothing wrong with packing a bottle of wine in it because the wine will keep the wine will keep for a while. You know, and of course not everybody can drink it. If you're under 18 uh, or under 21, no. But uh, but look, if you're going to ride out the storm, or if you you need to pack you know, this, you can still pack this in your emergency kit, right? Everyone should have a bottle of wine. Everyone 21 and older should have a bottle of wine in their emergency kit. But that's not the first thing, okay? That's just that's a joke, okay? Pack it if you got the room, but if you don't, just pack what you need, okay? Um, in all seriousness. Uh, International Pod, I just want to mention one more thing. International Podcast Day is coming up. And, I'm, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because um, I'm going to be doing something special for International Podcast Day. International Podcast Day is, a, um, is an annual event where, uh, to raise post awareness to podcasting and getting new people into podcasting uh, or into listening to podcasts or doing podcasting, whatever. But um, International Podcast Day uh, is going to be uh, September 30th. Of course, this, uh, this is now September 1st because it's after midnight. Oh, it's almost 1 o'clock. Uh, I'm celebrating International Podcast Day. It's going to be on September 30th, and this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing, and this is why I'm mentioning this. I'm going to be doing something very special for International Podcast Day for drinkwithrick.com. I'm going to take this show, and I'm going to do a podcast. I'm going to do a Drink With Rick marathon. Yes, no, I'm not going to drink wine for 24 hours. Although uh, it doesn't sound like such a bad idea, it doesn't. Um, not until the next day, <laughs> you know, when it's all wearing off. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to release um, uh, about uh, about 18 hours worth of Drink with Rick podcasts in succession, one every two hours, and for about about uh, 12 to 18 hours. Uh, just a whole marathon of episodes of Drink with Rick. So you'll be able to hear all these episodes of Drink with Rick. And on it's going to culminate on, uh, on the 30th with a special episode uh, of Drink with Rick, the live stream, the wine stream that we do here. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, 12, 14 hours of, or 18 hours, whatever it is. I, I haven't really worked all the math out yet. Uh, we've, we've got a lot of episodes to put out. <laughs> but we're going to, I'm going to put out uh, a marathon of episodes and uh, on the 29th to the 30th. And then it's going to culminate with a special live episode celebrating International Podcast Day. Uh, where I can do a lot of toasting for uh, for podcasting um, on the thirtieth. Now the thirtieth is also the day that they're going to announce the winners of the People's Choice Podcast Awards that I mentioned earlier. And uh, interesting enough, this this is also kind of special for me because for the first time. One of my podcasts, or podcasts that I'm personally involved with, uh, has been nominated for the People's Choice Podcast Award in the technology category. Uh, as, as many of you know, the, the uh, two-way radio show, uh, I co-host them uh, along with my, that's my day job, uh, podcasting and, and the YouTube videos and things. But the um, two-way radio show, which is a show about two-way radios, uh, which I co-host with uh, with Danny Feimster and Anthony Roque. Um, Dan, uh, Danny is the president of of um, of By Two Way Radios, and Anthony is the COO. Uh, I'm the product manager, and the three of us do this podcast every couple of weeks, every, uh, every two or three weeks, and. Um, it has been nominated for the People's Choice Award in the technology category this year. So I don't know if we'll win or not. Who knows? It's just that the idea of being nominated. You know, we're talking about you have uh, three quarters of a million podcasts out there that have ever been created. Pretty close to a million. 
three quarters of uh, uh, 750,000 shows, something like that. Um, uh, a lot of them have pod faded over the years, but 150 some odd thousand are active. Let's uh, round it down. 150,000 podcasts, and we are one of 10 in the running for the pod, for the technology category. I'd say that's a pretty good accomplishment, so I'll toast that. Another opportunity to toast. Um, and I want to thank those who did nominate us to it. I really do. Um, but um, that's September 30th. That's going to be... Um, that's going to happen, and we'll we'll see whether we win or not. Um, who knows? But uh, it's just going to be fun. Just the fact that we're nominated is kind of cool. Anyway, I don't know if anybody's still with us in the chat, but I, I want to. Uh, I'm going to close up now, but I want to say thanks to to everyone here who joined us tonight. Penny, Matt, um, at the wine store, uh, Trish. And you know what? I haven't checked the live stream lately, but uh, oh wow, <laughs> I'm sorry, Molly, sweet Molly. Uh, she says, "Okay, my birthday is September 15th," and um, she also says, "Good taste. All the Baron Delay wines are great. Hope you get some more soon. Not to distract. Recognize those loved ones." Uh, Molly, I, I really, really appreciate. It. Once again, this is uh, what we. Uh, tried today was the Southern Bell, Bell red wine. I'm really impressed with this wine. I like it a lot. I really do like it. Uh, I, I, I didn't go in with a lot of high hopes, um, but it, it, uh, I was really impressed with it. And Molly is the one who actually recommended this wine for me. And I do appreciate it, Molly. Thank you very much. I am going to pick up a couple more bottles of this, uh, maybe, maybe more. Uh, it, it just turned out to be a really, really nice wine. I really am impressed with it. Um, I want to thank Molly for joining us, and I want to thank uh, everyone. Uh, Penny here. I don't know if she's still watching. I Probably everybody's gone to sleep by this time. I've gone way longer. This is going to be a 70-minute show, and it's like two hours already. Uh, Mark, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, everyone who's joined us in the chat, uh, Matt, Trish, uh, Jonathan, uh, who else is in here? Uh, uh, wow, Nelia, Ron, uh, Chi, my beautiful wife Chi, and uh, I've been sitting on this this uh, too long. There we go. Um, thank you for joining me for on the wine stream. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. I appreciate all my friends uh, who who uh, tune in and. Uh, I want to say that uh, you can, of course, you can catch, you can catch this on the on the uh, uh, later on if you didn't if you missed it. You can catch it at drinkwithrick.com. You can comment, email me at rick at savoyamedia.com. Uh, tell me what you think of the show. Tell me what you'd like to see. Tell me what you you think I should change. Tell me if I'm all wet. I don't know. You know, whatever. Just 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 talk to me. Just 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 email me and tell me what's going on. And um, and you know what? If I I have a couple of T-shirts here from Buy Two Wear Radios, I, I I could give away. So uh, next time, leave me some comments. If I read your comment, uh, just email me. I'll I'll I, I can send you a T-shirt. So uh, you can cat you can catch the podcast at uh, drinkwithrick.com. You can catch it on iTunes. Uh, not iTunes. Excuse me. I keep doing that. It's Apple Podcasts now. You can, uh, Google Podcasts, you can catch it there. You can catch it on uh, uh, what a, what a bunch of places. Uh, Stitcher, Radio, uh, Spotify, uh, just about everywhere where you can catch podcasts, you can hear Drink With Rick. Uh, you can also hear it on your Alexa. Just say, Alexa, play the Drink With Rick podcast, and she should be able to play it. Uh, same thing with Google Home. Just say, okay, Google, play the Drink With Rick podcast. should be able to hear it. Tune in. You can hear it on Tune in. You can hear it on Stitcher. I mentioned Stitcher. You can hear it on all these places. Uh, anyway, thanks for joining me tonight. I really, really appreciate it. Join me next week. Uh, 
we'll open. I don't know what we're going to open up yet. It's a wild card. We'll see what happens. We'll open up something. We'll uh, taste it. We'll test it. We'll review it. We'll see what it pairs with, what it doesn't pair with. Um, anyway, join me next week um, on the Saturday Night Wine Stream uh, where we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night. Long on that.